All right, my friends, I want to dive into Rick Edelman's uh, article a little bit more on his 11 reasons to carry a big fat mortgage into retirement. Um, I've been thinking about a lot that last night. I've been uh, wait, I woke up early this morning as I normally do to take old pop. I wake up early anyway, but now I got to take Pablo for a walk too. So it gets my thinking cap and going. And uh, I just, I can't, the, the absurdity of this argument just boggles my mind. Uh, someone had posted a great comment yesterday. Um, it's kind of like the buy term and invest the rest uh, scenario that, yeah, it works if it works, but when it doesn't, it's devastating. The same thing is here. Uh, when it works, it's great. So um, I've been thinking about this, got up early in the morning, having shaved, having showered, still see the mess of my hair, still got my sleep clothes on, got the kids off to school. Uh, and I want to dive into this because I've been working on all these spreadsheets all this morning. So uh, I want to share it with you because uh, I, I just, the absurdity again of that argument, uh, it bogs my mind. I don't, I, I just, I don't get it. I, I don't, I just, I don't get how anyone could make a claim that it's better to take a mortgage into retirement with the cash flow requirements that comes from it. And they use just basic modeling. Uh, so let, and which, well, let's just go into it. All right, so here's his article again, 11 great reasons to carry a big long mortgage. Um, I, again, just the absurdity, bog, absurdity, absurdity of it boggles my mind. All right, so let's, uh, I've been working on this all day long, um, all morning long here. What time is it right now? It's. Uh, it's 8.31, so I got up, you know, I'm like I said, about 5 o'clock, walked Pablo, think about this in the last two and a half hours and work on a spreadsheet. So I want to share with you. So we're going to start with the, uh, this is, uh, you see where it says home value since 1940. I'll, let's give you a sneak peek of a, a spreadsheet I'm working on for my course, which is home values uh, each and every state uh, going back to 1940 and using the Census Bureau data, adjusting it uh, according to 2019 dollars of home uh, Zillow home value. And uh, this is just stuff I've created. So if you're wondering what this is, I'll, I'll share that with you in a different video. But for right now, we're just going to take uh, the S and I just going to be, let me make this a little bit bigger. Um, so what we're doing is we're taking the S&P 500 uh, and we're going to use a return since 1914. Anyone want to take a guess while I'm using 1914? Because the Federal Reserve started in 1913, the latter part of 1913. So 1914 was really his first official year of living under a Federal Reserve uh, monetary policy. And uh, and that's kind of what I say is a modern era of uh, capital markets. Now we're gonna, you'll see like the Ibbotson returns is a stock, bonds, bills, and inflation, the Ibbotson SBBI uh, that goes back to 1926, and that's kind of what I used to say was a modern era, but I've, I've changed my mind on that. The modern era is really since the Federal Reserve came into being, and so that's what we're going to use. We're going to use the S&P 500 going back to 1914 and use that as our rates of return, all right? Why are we use the S&P 500? Because if you're going to take, take a mortgage and invest the proceeds, uh, you'd be insane not to invest it in aggressive accounts. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever to invest it in bonds. I, I won't get that at all. But so we're going to use the S and P 500. And if you hear Pablo barking, they got a neighbor who's getting his lawn mowed. All right. So then we're going to say we have a home value of two hundred fifty thousand bucks, and we're going to take a mortgage against it. So what's that? Seventy five percent. Yeah. So we're going to take uh, two hundred divided by two fifty. Yeah, eighty percent. Excuse. Me. We're going to take an eighty percent loan to value. So we're going to keep fifty thousand dollars of equity in the home. We're going to borrow two hundred thousand bucks. Our interest is going to be four and a half percent. We've got three hundred fifty, uh, three hundred sixty payments, i.e., uh, uh, thirty-year mortgage, and our principal and interest is uh, is one thousand nine dollars a month. Now we do have property taxes and insurance, but that's not relevant in this scenario because you're still going to have property taxes and insurance. So we're not going to use that as part of our uh, mortgage payment simply because, again, you're going to have to pay for that no matter what. So in this case, our annual principal and interest for 30 years is 12108 I'll get to this. What this here is just the next, uh, next uh, sheet here. So we got to come up with 12108 and we're going to come. It's got to come up from someplace. So in this case, we're going to come from the investments that we make. The 12108 divided by $200,000. We're going to have to come up with 6% a year is what we're looking at. All right, so 6% a year in the S&P 500. Uh, now, again, the 6% a year isn't 6% a year. It's 12,108 is what we're doing here. We're going back to 1914. Everything is in the S&P 500. I hope that makes sense. So what you'll see here is I've taken the S&P 500 average, uh, not the average, the actual real-world numbers, 
and we started in 1914 and the first year we're down uh, 5.39 percent all right so we have 200,000 bucks we start with uh, we're dropped down to uh, 5.39 percent and then we're taking this amount right here which is our mortgage uh, hold on a second right there we're taking this amount right here which is k uh, K4 that's our more that's that's our mortgage payment and we're subtracting it from here So what we're doing again is we're taking two hundred thousand bucks We're investing it. It does whatever it does and at the end of the year We're pulling the whole thing out to pay for a 12 months of mortgage Yes, it won't work like that specifically because you have monthly payments and and I assuming that you paid your first uh, Year of mortgage with uh, with your funds already so we're sort of giving an advantage to the Rick Edelman scenario here because we're not taking it monthly. We're just taking it uh, annually and we're taking it at the end of the year as opposed to the beginning of the year. It just I just want to show you the, the how this works. All right, so we're taking real numbers here, all right? So we're going to do that each and every year. We take the 200000 bucks, We invest it. The first year, we're down 5.5% roughly. Uh, so we're left with 200000 minus 5.39% subtract the twelve thousand dollars roughly it costs us for the mortgage and we're left with 177,000 bucks the following year we take this 177,000 dollars we invest it in the market it gives us a three a 31.2 percent subtract out the mortgage and we're left with 220 we're doing that for 30 running years every single time so let's see so if we start in 2000 uh 1914 how much are we left with when we uh, when after the mortgage is paid off, we're left with four hundred and sixty thousand dollars. All right, so that worked out good. And we, the reason I have yeses here is because I want to have it if it has more than our starting value, more than two hundred thousand dollars, I give it a yes. All right, and what you'll see is every single time here we got uh, two fifty we're starting with, uh, I mean two hundred we're starting with, and the. Uh, Let's see here and then because it's up 31 percent we did quite well but then we have to take the mortgage payment out and you can see we go down to 198 in 1917 but we were able to survive then we go and then of course the great depression hit in we're back down to 278 but we're still above where we started at the end of 30 years we got 771,000 when we started 1915 and when we started 1916 uh, we had 521 and so on and so on. So then if we started in, uh, let's see, let's start in 1930 right here. We're going to start in 1930 right there. Uh, we got we got swamped the first year. We're down to $54,000, $38,000, $32,000 by, uh, what year was that? Um Let's see here. By 1934, we're down to 32,000 bucks right there. So if you start in 1930, by 1934, we're down to 32,000 bucks, and then we ran out of money uh, here. That would be in 19 what 41 or something like that. Let's see. That would be in 1939. So we ran out of money in 1939 here. So that's a big no go. That did not work for us. All right, we have no money here. All right, so that's bad. Uh, and so if you scroll down here, we're going to see we ran out of money. Hold on, right, right, we got to go back here. We ran out of money. So here we got no money, and that's an R. So an R we started, which would be in, oops, hold on, go, keep going the wrong way. R, we, no, hold on a second here, right? I keep going the wrong way. So let me make this a little bit smaller. It's easier when it's smaller. All right, so here we ran out of money in what years here? right here that's our we ran out of money and that right there is we started in 1927 we ran out of money started in 1928 we ran out of money started in 1929 we ran out of money so this is 1929 started in 1930 we ran out of money but then we started in 1931 not only did we not run out of money we had 3.9 million left over at our desk so we did pretty well actually so we started there and we uh we kicked butt and took names it worked real well for us we started 1931 started 19 you can see how this works so here we got 1.5 million and when we start off and that's z and z would be and we started in 1935 all right so when i did all what at the end of the day what happens i did all these there's 75 rolling 30 year time frames and only three did we run or four did we run out of money i think it was four did we ran out of money hold on a sec i think it was four actually one two three four yeah one two three four we ran out of money so let me change that so 71 so four times out of 75 we ran out of money so that you know that's a 95 percent hit raise that's pretty good 
But the problem, let me just show you. So even the years we didn't run out of money, uh, let's you know, let's take a random one. Let's say we started in this year right here. What year is this? This is 1917. So we start with 200,000 uh, bucks. We were down to 148 come uh, 1920. All right. Mm -hmm. Remember, we took a full mortgage on our house. We were down to 148,000. We started with 200,000 bucks. I don't know. That's a pretty tough, dicey situation. Come uh, here, and this is what year is this? This is 1932. We're down to 162. I, I mean, that's you know, that's freaking 13 years in. We're down to 162, and we're back down to 263. Come a few years after that, are you able to stand in there? I, I tell you, man, that's that's. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, so we ended up with nine hundred fifty-three thousand bucks. Hold on, being ended up with nine nine hundred fifty-three thousand bucks. I mean, there's some times in there that was pretty dicey when we're sitting on you know two two oh eight. I mean, look at that. And I mean, at, you know two uh, two eighty two ten years in fifteen years in. Uh, here we had four hundred nine thousand dollars, and this is when we started in. Uh, let's see, what year was this? Nineteen sixteen. Uh, we were down to 162 again halfway through. I mean, that's uh, that's a lot harder to think about when you got your mortgage, you got a debt on your home, and you're hoping that the markets cooperate. All right, let's see, let's see, let's uh, pick out this one right here. So this year was what uh, 1923 we started, and we were down to 186 come 1931. I mean, again, it's pretty dicey stuff there, man. Oh, you can handle that. Yeah, really. And here we started, what's this? Uh, 1925 we started during the great, uh, you know, the freaking roaring 20s. But come uh, 1932, we're down to 143000 bucks. We still had a mortgage over what we had in our accounts left at that point. I, you know, and then fast forward to, what's this year? 1942. 1941, we're down to 182. I mean, fast forward to this year right here. 19, what's that, 1941, we're down to 116. I mean, you can see how this works. All these are yeses where they survived and actually had more than 200,000 what we put in. But, I mean, you're talking 116,000 bucks midway through this whole, you know, this whole scenario. We started here, what year is this? Um, in 1926, uh, and we were down to... I so, saw, we'll let's see, 19, we were down to 111, you know, a few years later. We were down to 116 in 1941. I mean, that's not, you know, we were down to 193 in 1949. So we never really got back over what we started with. A couple times we did, but that's it. We, we uh, in the beginning, we did okay, but then we went to 130, 111. Uh, then we fell below 200 for the base in the next 10, 12 years. And we found because we had a, we retired in the last part, which is a booming market. We, we had 609,000 bucks. I'm telling you, man, that's a, that's a dicey proposition if you ask me. So, you know, here was, what year is this right here? This is uh, 1940 we started and uh, right here, 1940 we started. And we're looking pretty good there. But again, we were down to 142 just two years in. Ah, man. So I don't know. That seems a whole lot easier than to be said. We're not done here yet. So, I mean, now you can see when we start in the, in the 50s, we cook. But this is uh, starting in 19. Let's see. Let's start in 19. Let's start in 1950. Let's see where we end up there. Boink. So we're going to click on this guy here. And we're going to start in 1950, which is right there. A N. So when we start with the A N, we're at 303, 347. I mean, we I mean look at that. We're leaving, we're in deep seven figures uh, at that point because we started such a good year. But watch this. Let's start in 19. What year is this right here? This will be A Z. That'll be in 1962. Let's start in 1962. Oof, we're down to 181. You know, come 1980, probably 78, 80. Look at that, man. So that's 62. Let's start in 66, right? I bet this is 60, 62, 63, 4, 5, right here. Watch this. You're down at 127. I bet that's 74. Let's take a look. 
78. You're down at 127 in 1978. I mean, that's uh, that's tough, man. That is tough. So anyway, the point about that. So we, even though it, it shows a significant success rate of 94.6% that you had more than you put in, there's some dicey times. Now, let's add taxes to the mix because don't forget, you got to pay tax on this stuff. I mean, if you're, make, if you're pulling money out of your portfolio, it's taxed. Oh, but Josh, the first 200000 of your, your cost basis isn't taxed. Okay, but your interest above that is. And uh, it, it, we don't know what it, I'm just going to. So let me show you what happens there. So when we're using a tax scenario, and I'm using 20% tax on distributions, capital gains sometimes are taxed much higher. Uh, they've been significantly higher for the bulk of our time. So I'm actually giving this more of a favorable position because I'm saying, look, yeah, you're going to get your two hundred thousand dollars back. Uh, that's that's true. But after that, it's all tax. I'm giving you a low tax bracket of only 20%. So you'll get if you're taking twelve thousand a year out you'll get uh, uh, 16 years of tax-free because you have your cost basis is 200000 bucks. But then after that, I'm just saying your whole tax is, is only 20%. If you look historically, your capital gain tax has been much higher than that, especially when you factor in the difference between short-term and long-term. So once at the end of the day, I think 20% is a fair number to use for tax. I think it's actually, again, a little bit on the lenient side. When we start doing it with taxes, we have, only third, uh, we have 10 years where we ran out of money. So we, we more than doubled our, our lack of success where we ran out of money, or at least I didn't have as much as 200000 bucks left over because we're paying tax here, all right? And so that, again, it gets dicier and dicier and dicier when you start throwing taxes and you start throwing, uh, you know, the real world scenario of it. instead of just a flat 7% rate of return, I mean, here's what year is this, 1919, you start with 200000 and by uh, 1932, you're back to 97 after taxes. I mean, you are less than what you initially put in uh, 13 years later. I, I tell you, man, I just look at this. Here's we're starting in uh, 1926. I mean, you're up to 385 in 1929, but then you're down to $78,000 come, uh, what year is that? 1944. And then you're flat out of money. I, I just, the risk is too high, my friends. It's just too high. And I mean, I just, I don't, you know, if we, if we look at Rick Edelman's thing, just using a even rate of return, you can't, I just, yeah. look, you can run Monte Carlos. I get that. I just like looking the real world, the real world of the U S economy from 1914 until now has been the best burned uh, economy we've ever seen in the world's history. And even then, you still have some times where you ran out of money. Not huge amounts, but then you got to figure the human capacity to handle risk, too. I mean, if you're sitting there, you said, 10 years in, I put $200,000. Now I'm sitting on one ten, and I still have a mortgage that's one fifty. I Man, I just don't. That's a tough, tough position to be in because you still got to get the cash. And the cash is where it got to come from someplace. So don't do that, man. And anyone who says, look, if we take debt, or doing a term, buy a term and invest the rest, and we're just using a straight thing. It just you, you can't do it like that. You got to look at the real world. Now the real world will probably look better to some degree, but you'll see the risks on the rolling thirty years, rolling twenty years, because you can see some years it doesn't look good. In fact, some years run out of money. Other years it looks freaking phenomenal. But there's never a seven percent rate of return year over year. Never. So you got to look at the real world. And if you want to run in Monte Carlo, that's fine. But don't remember at the end, but don't just look at the end result. Did I survive? You got to look at the end result. Was I able to hang in there when the market, even though I ultimately survived the market in 2009, I was down, I was getting hammered. I, yeah. Anyway, I hope this helps. I just, I don't like this whole thing with Rick Edelman doing that. I think it's bad advice. I think it's bad planning and you should not follow it. I will right, we'll see you.